name's Ganey, and I haven't put any videos up in a very long time. And at the request of a few people, I decided I would go ahead and put up some tips uh, for playing the accordion and a couple of uh, short instructional lessons for some uh, popular songs. I uh, hope you enjoy. This is by no means considered the gospel when it comes to playing the accordion. This is just the way I do it, what works for me, and um, I think are good suggestions for the learning public. Uh, I hope you enjoy it. Okay, let's start with how to hold the accordion. Now, I'm standing for this demonstration, but my preferred position for playing is seated with the accordion on my knee like such. Now, some people keep the accordion flat on their leg when they're playing, others tilt it forward. I like to tilt it forward. It gives me a corner kind of buried into my knee that keeps the accordion from sliding anywhere. And I can also tilt it a little bit to this degree to keep it from going back and forth. That helps keep some of the pressure off of your thumb. Now, let's talk about the thumb. Thumb strap, I see an awful lot of people with their thumbs on the back of the keyboard like such. To me, my opinion is this drastically limits what you can do with your fingers because your palm in essence is resting on the keyboard so you kind of limit it to what you got right here without actually lifting your hand to go somewhere else I like my strap to be long enough for me to put my thumb on the end of the keyboard most straps are roughly in the middle of the keyboard um, I kind of favor one a little bit higher this one is in the middle you keep your thumb on the end of the keyboard as a pivot point and then you got full range of the keyboard with your fingers okay on the opposite side of your accordion of course you have your bass box which you what you're operating with your pinky finger and your index finger and on the back of the accordion is your air button which you operate with your palm okay of course you don't want this part of your accordion resting on anything you don't want it on your leg because this is the stationary part this is the moving part Okay? So you keep this portion of your accordion free from any resistance other than its own bellow. And remember, whenever you're playing your uh, bass side, you want to always try to incorporate your bass side with whatever you're playing. Um, even if you have to play it super slow, get the muscle memory in your fingers working so that you can get the, get the timing down. Okay. Okay. I kind of want to talk a little bit about what we call. Uh, it's kind of kind of become a common term to use uh, the word blends for playing partial partial chords. Um, it's the way the diatonic accordion is built. It's not possible to play a full chord unless you incorporate the very top button, which I'll show you in a, in a moment. Uh, the term chord implies four notes uh, which you need for a complete chord so what we're using at the most is three which is actually a triad and I'll demonstrate those on the push these are all on the push any combination of buttons on the push any combination around the keyboard is a partial chord in the key of C that's because every note on the push is either a C, E, or G, which is the first, third, and fifth notes of the chord of, of C. Okay? You, the reason you can't make a full four-note chord is because the sixth note that you need, the A, is in the pull position. So you cannot do three and a pull at the same time so any position in the C push position is a partial chord it implies the chord C the most common are this one which would be the four five uh, this one the three four and then you have the six seven those are the most common you can start off a song. You're starting off with the with the four or five. Now, by changing different variations, you get a different voicing. 
different voicings of the same implied partial chord. Now, on the pull side, we have a lot of different variations. Uh, let's go through the ones that imply the G chord first. If you pull on the 6 and 7 together, that is a two note partial chord that implies the key of G. Now, you can do a three note partial if you incorporate the very top button which has a G. Otherwise, the only G's you have are on the push. So you cannot push your G or your root note when you're trying to imply chords on the pull. So you can do two note blends. Now if you incorporate an octave, you're only duplicating a note. You're not adding a third note. Okay, so that 6-7 pull implies a G. Also, this 7-10 pull implies a G. Okay, you can do a 5-7 pull which can imply either a D chord or an A minor chord depending on how it's used. And that same type of combination can be found at the bottom with the 7-9. Okay. You also have some F chord implied partial chords. By using the 4-5 on the pull, you can imply an F chord. By using the 7-8 or the 8-9, you can imply the F chord. So these are all partial implied chords that can be used when you're playing. There are, there are others and you can find them experimenting but those are the most common. Okay, let me talk about bass accompaniment for a minute. Uh, whenever you're playing your song, as I mentioned before, you want to keep your bass accompaniment going. Especially if you're playing by yourself or acoustically. Now, the diatonic, diatonic accordion on the bass side is only capable of playing two chords. The C push, this is a C accordion, got the bass note and the chord. And on the pull it's the G. Now, I mentioned earlier on the treble side that you could play some F chords. You don't have the F accompaniment on the bass side of the box. But, when you're playing those types of songs, that's what makes the flavor of Cajun music, makes it unique and somebody that really knows how to operate their bass side can uh, make a song sound really good. So if you're playing a two-step, you want to keep it, remember your pinky is always your root. So you always want to keep the, the bass side going in a two-step, it'd be one, two, one, two, root, index, or pinky index, pinky index. <laughs> Notice, no matter what direction I was going in, I was alternating from the pinky to the index. If you're playing a waltz, you're going to be doing a 1, 2, 3 pattern, or a pinky index index, pinky index index. Notice again, I changed some directions with the bellows to... to emphasize how you keep the one, two, three, one, two, three going. Okay, so I hope this little bit was informative. Uh, it's by no means meant to be a comprehensive um, accordion lesson. It's an introduction, some basics that sometimes people don't, uh, uh, it takes them a long time to get to or nobody explains it to them and they just need a little push to get past some of the basics.